Hey Canucks fans, it's once again Canucks game day. The Canucks will look to build on their big win from last night and they'll do it with Yaroslav Halak in goal. I am Canuck Clay and this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, February the 9th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely and trustworthy. Thanks again for all your messages and well wishes and prayers. They keep on coming and I keep on appreciating them. Back to see Gail in the hospital today and hopefully she's back home tomorrow. But thank you once again for your kind support and interest in Gail's health. We're very, very grateful to all of you. Canucks, last night, 5-1 victory. Yes, I, I nailed the prediction. Not only the score, but the first goal score. Stay tuned to the end of this video to see if I can do it again. Well, I guess we won't know until tonight, but you know what I mean. That's when I give my prediction. But yes, uh, without rehashing last night's recap video, I think the, the two biggest takeaways to me were, number one, that the best players were indeed the best players. The five guys you want scoring, your five of your top six, in Besser, Horvat, Pedersen, Miller, and Garland, they all scored a goal, which is, which is awesome. Which is awesome because it was great when you're getting goals from the Tyler Motts and the Matthew Highmores and the Yuho Lamacos of the world. And even the, obviously, it's nice when Pod Colson and Hoglander chip in. But those guys, those five guys I just named, they're not expected to be your best players. It's indeed your top six of Miller, Horvat, Pedersen, Besser, and Garland. And then I guess Pearson would round out the top six if you want to put him in there. So yeah, five of those guys scored last night, and that's a big reason uh, why the Canucks won, and won quite handily once they got through that a bit of a disastrous first period. The other big, uh, you know, I think standout point to me was Oliver ekman Larson. Uh, granted, it, one of them was simply giving the puck to JT Miller behind the Canucks and letting him do his thing. But OEL got three assists last night, which was pretty good, and it's not a coincidence that he did it on the first night that Quinn Hughes wasn't in the lineup. So not only does uh, his minutes stayed about the same, but his situ uh, situational um, his situational play it became more apparent. Obviously, he got opportunities on the power play, for instance, where he picked up um, uh, a couple of his assists. So overall, a great game by Ekman Larson and a great game by the decor overall, actually, as a whole, considering that they were missing Hughes, Pullman, and Hamnick. I'll talk about Hamnick in a second. So those are the two standouts to me, was the offense, um, the best players being best players, and then Oliver ekman Larson stepping up. And both, Oliver ekman Larson and JT Miller, it's kind of appropriate, I mentioned both of them already, they both celebrated 400 career points yesterday, which was pretty cool milestone for both of them. So congratulations to JT Miller and to Oliver ekman Larson. Tonight, the Canucks will make at least one change we know. Yaroslav Halak will start in goal. Yes, it's his 10th appearance of the season. So yes, that triggers the $1.25 million bonus. We've talked about it a lot on this channel. One point, he, had, he basically signed a one-year up to $3 million salary. $1.5 million guaranteed as a salary this season. And then another uh, $1.5 in bonuses. $1.25 was if he appears in 10 games, which is tonight. The other two hundred fifty grand is a save percentage of nine oh five, which he's well above right now. And then, given the cap situation, given the way the contract was set up, the Canucks have an option or have the ability to pay that salary out next season. $1.5 million applying to next year's cap. You're going to have to bear with me as there's a garbage truck beside me, so I'm just going to talk really loud for the next little bit. So, uh, that leads into trade talk. Obviously, I, I talked about this last week. Are the Canucks going to try... Uh, were they going to sit Halak just so he didn't make that 10-game bonus? Of course not. They're not going to do that, and they're not going to, um, you know, be that petty or make it that unattractive for future free agents. Will they try and move him so they don't have to pay out that $1.5 million bonus? Well, that's a different story. And I know that Thomas Strantz did some reporting in the Athletics saying at least the Canucks have explored what that might look like. That's not to say that it is going to happen. But regardless, Halak's been great for us this season. He really has. He's what you want in a backup goaltender. He comes in, you don't worry about that. Uh, there's a big drop-off. There's naturally a bit of a drop-off from the, your starter to your backup. But with Halak, he's a veteran. There's not a big drop-off. He doesn't get stressed. He seems, seems like he's okay in his role. Um, and let's hope that he can backstop the, the Canucks to uh, a win against hit one of his former teams. He's had a few former teams now. And um, so that's what it's going to look like in goal. It'll be Yaroslav Halak. On D, Bruce Brujo contained, um, confirmed it'll be the same six demon as yesterday. So OEL and Myers, Shen with Juleson, Hunt and Burroughs. And then I think I had them mixed up. I think it's Shen, um, did Shen play with Burroughs and it was Hunt and Juleson? I can't remember how they lined up last night, but we know that those are the six defensemen that will play tonight. That means um, Sautner won't be playing. Again, it's a healthy scratch. 
Hamnick, Pullman, Hughes all still out. And then up front, Bruce Boudreaux said they might make one change at forward. So the only really healthy forward right now that you could bring in is Dowling, given that Highmore is out. So I don't think you touch the top nine of Miller, Besser, Pearson, Horvat, Garland, Dickinson, PD between Huglander and Puck Holzen. So maybe one of Lamico, Mott, or Chason comes out. You can bring out Chason, put Dowling in, and then you have two options at center on that fourth line, Dowling and Lamico. Or maybe you give Lamico a break and put Dowling in. Um, Lamico has played just fine, but it's not the same without Highmore, but that's not Lamico's fault. So we'll see what happens. Um, it was interesting. They had an optional morning skate. It's optional because, A, they're coming off a game last night, and B, usually sometimes um, on morning skates, they are optional on game day skates. But there are six players out there. There are Halak, the starter, yes. Um, two defensemen in um, um, Sautner and Hamnick. So Sautner will be the healthy scratch tonight. Hamnick's looking to draw in maybe as early as Saturday against Toronto. And then three forwards, Dowling and Pod Coles in the Huglander. Now, maybe Pod Coles in the Huglander were out there because they were recent healthy scratches before the all-star break maybe they want to impress the coach maybe they know that as younger guys their their position lineup isn't cemented regardless they were out there this morning so um does that mean that dowling's actually going to come in for one of lamb uh, sorry one of pod colson or Hoglander? i doubt it because bruce Boudreau even talked about how much he likes that line those two youngsters playing with pd so my guess is gonna be one of of Chason or Lamico if indeed there is a change tonight. Bruce Rudrow would not uh, commit to that, at least in this morning's press conference. So there we go, Canucks fans. That's how we set up tonight's game. Halak and Net, no change on D, maybe one change at forward. And then uh, we still have Hughes in COVID protocol, Highmore in COVID protocol, Pullman recovering from migraines and headaches, Hamnick working his way back. So that's how the Canucks look tonight. Can I go two for two in score predictions? Why not? I don't think the Canucks are going to score five, but I still think they're going to score three or four. I think the Islanders will score more than one. So, wow. I'm going to go with 4-2 Vancouver. Surprise, surprise. 4-2 Vancouver. And let's say Pedersen keeps up his hot streak. I'm going PD with the first Canucks goal. So, 4-2 Canucks. Pedersen scoring the first goal. Let me know in the comments below your predictions for final score and first Canucks goal score. Okay. As always, shout out. To my sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the link in my video descriptions. And to Van City Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Shout out to my legends, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang. And to my hero member, Nux fan number 29. Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, HSM Fangirl Gaming, Smooth Groove, Funk U, and Carol Bovenlander. Thanks for your support as always. And thanks to the support of all members of all levels. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this during my videos or the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Become a member or upgrade if you like to. And leave a comment down below. First, Canucks goal score and your score prediction. Would love to see what you have to say. All right, friends. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day. Have a great night. Enjoy the game. God bless and go Canucks go.